Hi everyone, I'm sorry I didn't make a video for you last week, but I was teaching smartphone filmmaking and Film It Pro to kids at schools, which is really exciting. But back to the video, I wanna to talk to you about community posts. If you haven't actually kept tabs on my community posts, I asked recently for you guys to come up with ideas that you would like to see from my channel and you didn't disappoint. So today's video is all about the smartphone filmmaking accessories. I have every single one of them, where I'll be talking to you about what I use, how much I use them, and whether they'd be useful to you perhaps. So get yourself something to eat, get yourself a drink, kick back, relax, and enjoy. Starting off with tripods, this is my newer tripod, a two-in-one tripod. This is the one that I take everywhere with me. It is super, super handy. It gets really tall as well, maxes out about six foot, about the same height as me, maybe just a bit taller. It's got three clips here which you unlock to extend the legs so you can make it extremely tall. It's very robust, very strong. You've got a foam sort of handle here which you can grip onto, which is really useful for when you're walking around from location to location, and you're not gonna have a slippery, sweaty hand if it's the summer or anything going down kind of that pole. Uh, and then you've got a twisty little handle here, which when you twist that and unlock it, you can then slide the central part with the head of the camera and slide it right up as well, which you can extend even further. As you turn around here, you can see you've got the pan and tilt handle. It's got a nice rubber grip on there as well, so you can use that to get nice, smooth pans and tilts once you kind of get your settings right on it. And then you've got the red button there to release the quick release plate that holds the phone clamp. Now the phone clamp is actually a KNF concept clamp. This came with an old tripod that I had, but unfortunately the tripod itself broke. It was very terrible and naff. So I sent that back, kept onto the clamp, and now I have that attached to the newer tripod. And I have a pretty beastly setup now for any kind of excursion that I go on for filmmaking. And it's good for indoor, outdoor, really amazing bit of kit. Also has a spirit level as well. So if you need to make sure that you're level on any kind of terrain, it works great for that. You can then twist the leg as well. And this is where it becomes a two in one tripod. You can twist the leg off where the foam is and turn it into a monopod. So you can get the head of the tripod, attach that to that leg and extend it. So it's a nice tall monopod for different shots. Now this is my Amazon tripod. This is the first tripod I ever got. It's a very cheap one. Uh, unfortunately, when you buy cheap, you're gonna end up buying more tripods and just getting one that's more expensive. This one already broke when I first got it uh, straight in the post. Within about two weeks, the foot fell off of one of them and these clips aren't exactly strong either. It's great for a beginner's tripod in some ways, you know, if you don't wanna to spend too much money, but this did come in the post already with a broken pan tilt handle, which I emailed them about, which they didn't really do anything about. Um, so yeah, just be wary. If you're gonna buy a really cheap tripod, it is going to be made very, very cheaply. So think about what you wanna spend your money on. And if you spend a bit more money on getting something really good first time around, you're gonna save money in the long run. So it might feel bad to spend lots of money at first, but it does work out better. This phone clamp is it's a pretty standard one, really quite cheap, but it does its job. It's got a very, very tight spring-loaded system to it. Whilst we're on the topic of this particular tripod, this broke whilst I was trying to put a phone into it. I held it between my legs, not that tightly, I have to say, and it broke, and now I only have two legs on this tripod, which, as you can imagine, is much used for a tripod. So do not buy this tripod, despite what I said. It breaks very, very easily. This is the Octopus tripod that I absolutely love. I take this everywhere with me on any kind of filming I do. This literally fits everywhere. This is a Rhodesi Octopus tripod, cost about 18 pounds, and the legs will bend in any which way you could possibly think of. It's got rubber feet as well, so this grips on if you want to use it just as a regular tripod, or if you're gonna grip it onto fences, that kind of thing, it really helps. And the legs as well, they're actually sort of the soft kind of almost foam core type of material. So if you give them a squeeze, you can see that they go in and out and they can squeeze tightly onto any kind of material that you want to use it for. So this is a very versatile tripod. I didn't think I'd need a octopus tripod that much, but I have to say I take this absolutely everywhere with me. And it's a really handy tool to have in your smartphone filmmaking kit. You can wrap it around this fence post like here where you've got an unusual kind of like crossover off the wood and then the legs could being able to bend so far around all different ways it works amazing the ball head that you've got here for the phone clamp you just unscrew that key there and then it loosens the ball head to put your phone any which way that you want so whatever your surface is whether it's on the floor on the side wherever it is you will be able to get a flat level shot with this tripod which is why it's so great to take anywhere whether it's on bark bumpy grounds anywhere you'll always be able to get a really solid flat shot with this. So I highly recommend, even if it's not this tripod, an octopus tripod for your smartphone filmmaking equipment and rig setup that you have. Now let's take a look at ND filters. These are Moondog Labs ND filters. I have a two-stop ND filter. I've got a three-stop ND filter and a four-stop ND filter. As you go higher up the numbers, 
that cuts out more and more light to the lens of your phone, meaning you can keep your shutter speed down and control that. So with the two-stop ND filter, you can see that it now starts to retain information in the clouds, whereas before it was just getting blown out all the highlights. This is a three-stop ND filter. So once we attach that onto the phone, it should give a darker image because it's still cloudy and we should be able to retain some information there, but it may be a bit too dark. So think about lighting as well when using ND filters. But I really enjoy using these. They are so helpful, whether it's in the summer, any kind of daylight, it's always important to have ND filters. You have to have them for your smartphone filmmaking. Otherwise, you're just not gonna be able to get satisfactory cinematic quality for your uh, films and projects. So these ND filters from Moondog Labs cost about $30 each. Of course, there are many, many brands that do ND filters as well, but these are my personal ND filters of choice. Now with the Niwa variable ND filter that I have, this actually came with a clip-on. So it was a cheap set. I only bought it for the clip-on actually, so I could attach all my other filters and things onto my phone but this is how it originally came with the clip-on and you just twist it on, very easy. The only thing with this clip-on ND filter, the variable ND filter, is that on the side where you got the arrow, it doesn't actually tell you what level of ND you're using. So when you put it on, you have no idea what level you're gonna have it on. So obviously this is very dark, it's way too dark. We know how bright it is outside from the earlier shots. So you then twist it to try and get the right kind of exposure for your shots. And it's not the worst ND filter in the world. Again, I would probably recommend this only for beginners, but if you wanna get really professional shots, I would recommend spending the extra money, whether it's Moondog Labs, Moment, any other kind of company that makes really high level ND filters, it is worth spending the extra money. And remember, all links to the accessories that I'm discussing here will be in the description below. Now, one of the great things about these ND filters are that you can actually stack them. So say you're outdoors and it's really, really strong sunlight, you can actually stack them to make your ND strong enough to work with that sunlight and keep your shutter speed down. So that's a really useful thing to be able to do. Now, something I really would love to discuss with you guys is my CPL, Circular Polarizer Filter. Now, this is an amazing tool. It's one of the last things that I bought, but it should have been one of the first. Essentially, you've got this kind of lens cover over another lens, and when you twist the front one, it changes the amount of angles that light's coming into your phone sensor. So that way you can start to get rid of reflections from your image. It doesn't always work 100%. Usually it's about 90% of reflections that will disappear, like this one here. So if you had someone looking out the window, you could actually see that person really clearly, rather than not seeing them at all through all the reflections. This is also really great for car scenes as well. So maybe you've got two people having a discussion of some sort inside a car where normally you wouldn't be able to film this. You can now control those reflections, especially at certain angles to the sunlight and really get a good view of what you want to see rather than being blocked out by the weather conditions. Also works for water surfaces, whether it's rivers, puddles, things like this. Again, angles are quite important. Sometimes you might not be able to quite get the reflections away in the way that you want to, but in general, it works really well. I really love this accessory. This is an example of angles where it doesn't necessarily work 100%, so I can get rid of a lot of that bricks on the window reflection there and the door reflection, but here where you've got bricks all around the window, so light's only really coming from above and behind, it's very, very difficult to get rid of those reflections. In fact, it's pretty much impossible when you're head on with the light above and behind you. So how do I actually get these filters and lenses on? It's with a step up ring. So I highly recommend looking to step up rings and you probably will have to anyway when you're buying filters and lenses. This is a 37 to 52 millimeter step up ring. So I can now use my filters with my B-Script Pro rig or the actual clip that I've got because they're 52 millimeters. And obviously step up rings come in all sorts of sizes. So if you're ever confused about how you're gonna attach a lens or a filter that you bought onto your phone, look into step up rings and there should be a way for you to do that very, very easily and they twist onto that step up ring just the same as any other kind of lens mount and it works perfectly as you can see here. So let's take a look at lenses. Now these are cheap lenses that my girlfriend got me for Christmas one year from Amazon. They're really good fun beginners ones, but as you'll see, they're not necessarily the best quality. It's got a fisheye lens, it's got a wide angle lens, which is actually only, I think it's 0 0.67 uh, times wide. So you're not getting much extra and underneath that, you get a macro lens as well, which is really cool and fun to use. As I said, these are very, very cheap clip-on lenses that you can attach to your phone, so you're not necessarily gonna get the best quality glass, of course, but you can get some interesting shots, especially with the macro here. You can see a nice close-up of the skin, and it's pretty clear, even though it's a cheap macro lens, you can get some really, really unique shots that you could use, perhaps, for a film. Now, this is the wide-angle lens from the same set of lenses. You can see on the edges here, there's actually a bit of a curve here, distortion on the edges of the wide-angle lens. Now, the curtains are angled a bit like that anyway, 
but you have that on the left hand side too so you can see that distortion is not something you want so with this wide angle lens this cheap angle lens from amazon it just doesn't work very well on the edges although the quality isn't that bad in the middle this is the fisheye lens so you're getting that kind of peep hole looking through the door peep hole lens look and it's pretty good it's not too bad the coloring is a little bit faded but you do have that kind of distorted edges that you do want on a fisheye angle lens so this is a nice look it's something that you can play around a lot with this is something actually used in a short film um, called you me and myself i can't remember what it was called anyway you can see here from the fridge i had a nice shot from inside and i wanted those black edges around the edge to make it look more cctv like now with Movo lenses that I was sent by Movo, so thank you guys. I have the three times telephoto lens. I have the 18 millimeter wide angle lens and lastly, the super fisheye lens. These are really nice quality, usually sort of vlogging that kind of style lenses rather than filmmaking, but they are really nice lenses. With each one, you get a nice little cap lid. You get a clip. So if you lose a clip from one of them, you can just use the clip from a different lens onto the other one really nice set of lenses here and a quite good quality as well quite heavy this telephoto lens is quite a chunky beefy lens and as you can see there it's a three times telephoto lens so you're going to get a nice bit of bokeh a nice bit of shy depth of field on there you take the back cap off of it and you can just screw it all on together in the live shot this is how it looks without the telephoto lens and then when you put the telephoto lens on you can see how much depth of field you get there. Although I did find with this, it's quite hard to get a good focus in the center of your lens with these. So I had to shift the lens around a little bit to try and get that perfect. You can see it's much better here and the lighting is better here as well. Sometimes telephoto lens do suffer in lower light, but here you can see a nice shallow depth of field. You've got that central figure right in the middle there coming right towards you. And again, you get things shallow depth of field on the edge of frame as well to add a bit more dynamicness to your shots as well as you know nature photography and that kind of stuff. So these are really good for hobby style filmmaking and photography. Now we're gonna take a look at the super fisheye lens. And you can see the quality on this glass is much better than the cheap Amazon one, obviously. These cost about $40 each from Movo's website. You can see the nice distortion around the edges. You're not necessarily getting the actual edge of the lens in shot either, which is really good. The focus is there, it's nice and solid. And the coloring and the saturation is a bit more where you want it. It's not so faded and a bit kind of discolored. So you can see on a cheap Amazon lens versus the Movo lens, the Movo lens has richer colors and it just brings it to life a little bit more and makes it more exciting to watch as well. With the wide angle lens, you get a pouch with it as well. So it's stepping up in quality here, perhaps. It's a fake leather, it's not a real one. You get a nice little cloth there as well, a lens cloth, so you can clean that and all your other lenses with it as well. And a little clip that you can attach to your waistband too. But you can see here without a wide angle lens, it's a nice shot, but with the wide angle lens, you just get a much more sort of landscape feel to your shots, really good for establishing shots and things like that. So you can see the landscape is much more vast with these lenses. And when you've got a no wide angle lens on, then you're just getting quite a tight shot. And you can see here as well, if you've got a character walking across screen, if you've got the wide angle lens, it just makes it look like them having a more of a journey to make rather than the tight sort of regular lens that's gonna make it look a bit less sort of meaningful. Now my favorite lens is the anamorphic lens. This one is a Moondog Labs anamorphic lens for my iPhone 8. It is a clamp-on lens, so it's not one that you screw on. And the reason I got it is because I love Tangerine. That was by uh, Sean Baker. Lovely, beautiful shots that he got in here. It's an amazing film. If you haven't seen it, I highly, highly recommend you do. And you can see with this lens, you get a little blue flare. You can even see it through the lens itself. And it is a 1.33 times anamorphic Moondog Labs lens. Now on the actual clamp-on bit that flips out, you can see what the model is made for. So this is for an iPhone 8. And then when you play around with the actual clamp, you can see as it tightens up around the phone, the little foam sponge kind of comes out to tighten it around the phone so it doesn't move. And then it disappears when you open it back up. So how do I actually attach my filters to this anamorphic lens? Well, Moondog make a really nice little tight anamorphic lens adapter for your filters. And that's for both, you know, bayonet, screw on or clamp on anamorphic lenses so you can just attach your nd filters to that no problem no drama whatsoever and you can get stunning shots and it kind of makes everything look more i hate to say it but cinematic it just makes everything feel a bit more high budget as well you get these nice blue streaks across your screen which everyone loves from the anamorphic lens it's what they're kind of really known for and you can get really beautiful stunning shots with these and it really adds even to the simplest of shots a bit of high budget a high value feel to your film whatever you're filming really the project I also use it on a short film that I made too, and you can get these flares as well at night time, so they really stand out. Now let's go on to sound. This is the Boya BYM1 lav mic. Now this is an insane lav mic. It only cost, I believe it was about 15 pounds, maybe even cheaper now. 
you get again a little sort of fake leathery pouch but it holds everything in nice and tight and as long as you've got it just in your pocket or bag I don't see this kind of wrecking or ruining in any kind of way and what's hidden inside this kind of bag is really really crazy this lav is a 20 foot wire lav or six meter lav it is an insane length of wire to use now you probably think well why would I ever want to use that surely it's a bit cumbersome and it kind of is but it's still a really good lav you've got the dead cat windshield there you've got sort of a crocodile clip on there to put on your jumper if you think interviews that kind of thing and then with the central bit you can see as it's turned off slash smartphone that's when you can use it on your smartphone and then you can turn it on to camera so you can use this for DSLR cameras as well. It's a really, really amazing technique that you can use to basically film in any situation with any kind of camera. And when you're filming with a smartphone, as you can see when you open up this little central part, there's no battery in there because you don't need a battery because it's plugged in through the phone. So you won't ever have to buy a battery. And you can also, as you'll see here, tape it up to a wall, have your actor in front of it, have them talking. Out the window on a phone quietly so people will never know what I'm talking about. I just want subscribers and views and likes. Cool, huh? And you can also use it as a boom mic as well, so you can stretch it across. Uh, this is just a pole that you can use to hook down the ladder from the loft, so that kind of thing, or your attic. And then you can just hook the lav mic, wrap it around it, and have it dangling down. Now the Rode mic is my favorite microphone I've had, and that's really the reason why I haven't really used the Boya BYM1 at all since I made the original video about it, even though I do like that microphone. You get a pouch of it which you can put your transmitter and receiver into or just your wires and cables whatever you want to do with that really nice little softbox case there to put everything in nice and tight and safe you got your charger cables here as well which is really useful obviously you got one for your transmitter and receiver so you can actually charge them at the same time which is really great because if you're out and about and you're running out of battery it's going to be very very useful to have two of those cables so this is the transmitter you see the mic on the top there You've got the little link sort of picture on the left that shows you when it's lit up in blue that it's connected to your receiver. So if we turn these on, you can see that both blue lights are on. So you can see on the left screen on the actual receiver that it's connected to the transmitter and the blue lights are saying that the battery is full or you know healthy and it's still linked to the uh, receiver. The screen does go a bit dark after a while to save some battery life as well, but it's still working, it's still on there. And this is my favorite microphone by far. I use it for everything all the time. I do not go anywhere without this microphone. It is absolutely brilliant. Now it does come with a cable that has a TRRS uh, plug, which fits into an old school phone. But as with pretty much all modern phones now, they're lightning adapters, they're lightning ports. So you need an adapter to put your TRRS cable into. And then you've got the lightning adapter here, which plugs straight into your phone. And now you can use that for sound. The one thing I hate about this microphone, unfortunately, is the dead cat that comes with it. It is absolutely 110% useless. You've got these red little clip-ons that slot into those gaps there. And when you press into them, it just never really sticks. And it doesn't matter which way you do it. They've even made a video on the Rhodes website because so many people complained about this. The microphone itself is very, very good though. So what I did to get around this dead cat situation is buy the Rode magnet which is a bit of a rip off to be honest, about 15 quid for a magnet. But you put one on the underside of the clip-on of the transmitter, and then you put that under your T-shirt, for example, and then you use the other magnet on the other side of your T-shirt to hold it in place. So you're basically clamping it to your clothes to hold it in place, and then your jumper can work as a windshield effectively. Now I did make a video very recently about rigs, so I'll keep these ones brief. This is the Ulanzi U-Rig Pro. This costs about 12 pounds. As you can see, it's all plastic, but it's very, very sturdy. On top, you've got the quarter inch threads, one on each side for you know a lighting fixture or something like that. You've got three cold tree mounts as well for lights and microphones. A quarter inch thread on the bottoms, but on a tripod. And you've got these rubbery red grips as well for your phone. I don't know if you had a phone case whether this would be really good for it, but it certainly holds my phone very, very easy, very, very tight. Got a nice grip on there, and you know, you could pretty much throw this at someone and your phone's not gonna fall out. So it's a very sturdy, very good choice for someone who's just starting out in smartphone filmmaking. I've used this for the last year and a half and it has done me really, really well. And it's great just to get your hands off of the phone so you don't get those micro tremors in your images when you see your footage back. It's a really good option for low budget, beginners, smartphone filmmaking rig setup. Now let's look at something a lot more expensive and more versatile. So this is the B-Script Pro rig. I actually got this with the help of everyone that donated to my Buy Me A Coffee page. So if you haven't hit that page yet, do check it out. And if you'd like to donate to the channel to help me continue making these videos, then that'd be awesome. And if you're always saying thank yous by watching these videos, then thank you. So this is the B-Script Pro rig. This is the clamp that we have 
and I have to say it is absolutely brilliant. It's £105, so it's a little pricey, but it's very, very versatile. So you can see here with the gold screws, you can actually adapt the sort of teeth of the clamp, if you like, to lower them and higher them for a different size phone. So if you've got a smaller phone, you can bring them down to fit around that nice and tight. It's got a nice spring-loaded clamp as well. You can fit your Pro Max by using the gold screws at the top. It's got a cold tube mount at the top of that brace. And on the right-hand side, I've attached the cold tube mount that you get as extra with the rig itself. So you do get a few little bits with this. It's super versatile, as I said. And on the right, you've got a 37 millimeter mount for your filters or lenses. So I use my step-up ring that I showed you earlier here, 37 millimeter to 52 millimeter. Screw that onto the lens mount and you're good to go. You also get a mount that fits the Pro Max lens bottles as well. So you get that included with the box if you buy it at the moment. Now these screws on the outside of the center part of the rig, if you unscrew those, you can actually take off the left-hand side lens mount of this fixture and you're left with sort of a handheld rig that's much smaller and a bit more versatile. So if you're trying to get a phone into a tight space or you just don't want something that's bulky, you can use that, use one hand, and you can use that all over the place where you're filmmaking and get something a bit more sort of free flowing. The screws on the lens mount as well, you can loosen up so you can move that mount below if you don't want to use a lens mount, or if you've got a phone that's larger, you can bring that higher up as well to fit the phone fixture that you're using. You can also, as well as taking the lens mount section off, you can take the left hand section off here and it just leaves you with the center point. So you've got basically a phone clamp that you can attach to a tripod, for example. This is the A-Power power bank that I bought a long, long time ago. As soon as I had a 6S, I knew the battery wouldn't be so good on it, so I bought this and I've never looked back since. It is a really powerful power bank. You've got two charge points here, so you can charge out your Rode Wireless Go. If that's what you've got, you can do the transmitter and receiver at the same time or you can charge up your phone and charge up something else at the same time if you wish, and you've got a different center point there to charge from as well. Now this gives you four full charges on your phone, so you can see, so you can see here with the blue lights, every light that's lit up is a full charge that you can give your phone, so I've got four full charges on this power bank, and that will last me easily all day, pretty much on any phone, even if it's an older one. So this is something I really recommend you buy. I love this power bank, I use it all the time, a real worthwhile purchase. So this is the SanDisk flash drive, which I use all the time to export my files off my phones onto my laptop, which I use DaVinci Resolve for when I'm editing and color grading. So you've got the actual flash drive stick part here, which goes into your phone. You've got the other section, which goes into your laptop. So it's a very, very reliable way of exporting your files. Sometimes it crashes, but I've never lost files on it. So you just plug it into your phone, export your files, away you go, put it into your laptop, and you're good to go and edit. Highly recommend this, it's really, really useful. Now this is the Moondog Labs smartphone hood. Thank you Moondog Labs for sending me this way back when it first came out. This is a really handy accessory actually. And this is one that I take out when it's really, really sunny and on the times I've forgotten, it's been really annoying and I've got reflections all over my phone that I can't get rid of. Now the silk smartphone hood, you get a crocodile clip or you get a lot of them in a bag so you can fix them onto your sort of hood. And I tell you what, you look really cool in it as well. Now you get the instructions with it obviously, and when you unfold it, it's basically a leather pouch, almost like a wallet sized pouch. And you don't unclip that left hand side as I found out the first time around how to fix it. It's just the right hand side that's Velcro. So you open it up, you get the rubber strap that stretches around the back of the hood, and then you fix it onto the Velcro side on the right again. So basically reattaching it to its same place after it's opened up. It's really easy to use, really simple. They do two sizes as well. I believe it's a regular and a large, or a large and an extra large. So you can use these for any kind of phone that you have. And you just slot it into the back section between the plastic bits on the side and the rubber band, and then it fits right in and you won't get so many reflections. Now it's not a miracle worker, so it's not gonna get rid of all reflections, but it does help a heck of a lot on sunny days, particularly if you're facing away from the sun. And it's really, really useful for any kind of bright conditions really. As you can see, it fits with a smartphone rig. So this is the Ulanzi U-Rig Pro, but it does work with the B-Script Pro Rig as well. You can see the rubber band tightly on there, and even with the clamp on top of it, it still fits on really, really well. Also on the side of this, on the right-hand side, you'll see that there's a gap for the lightning ports. So if you want this to work with a Rode Wireless Go again, you can plug that in or whatever your microphone is, and then stick that on top of your rig, and it's got the gap there so you can use it at any point with sound as well. As you can see with the silk hood on, you don't get any reflections at all. So you might look a bit of a nutter, but it's a really good and useful thing to have. Now with a gimbal, it doesn't really work, especially a smartphone gimbal, because they're just not strong enough. The weight distribution of the smartphone hood obviously pulls towards you, which leans it down. And then it just doesn't become very useful with my Osmo Mobile 3. So I would probably use this more with a hybrid gimbal or a handheld setup or a tripod. But smartphone gimbals, it's just not gonna work because the gimbals aren't strong enough to handle that type of weight distribution on it. 
but I do highly recommend this. It's something that I use a lot in bright conditions and it's a very well built, very high quality piece of accessory. Now this is a lens cap that I have, again from Moondog Labs. This is one that I bought myself, only $5, but it's very, very handy when you're traveling around from location to location and you don't want to drop your camera or a lens and smash it, or you don't want loads of dust getting onto it when you're walking from one location to another. You just push the inner bits even more in, that kind of tightens it up and you let it expand over the lens as well. And it just holds tightly on there and it's not going anywhere no matter how much you shake it or try and pull it off. So you have to squeeze it back in to pop it off. And it's a real worthwhile investment and very cheap as well. These are my Moment Cinebloom Diffusion Filters. If you've seen my uh, video on these, you'll know that I absolutely love these filters. They're so fantastic and absolutely brilliant. This is the 20%, that is a 37 millimeter diffusion filter. Now the reason I got a 37 millimeter rather than a 52 is because when they first came out, they didn't do a 52 millimeter, which uh, was a bit annoying, but they have them now. So if you want that kind of size, you can get them in all sorts of varying sizes on their website. Now, these are very handy for softening your image. So rather than having that digital edge, you just get a nice, soft, clean edge, which makes it look a bit more film-like. As you can see there, I just screwed that on the clip, but you can screw these onto a B-Script Pro rig as well with the step-up ring or whatever size you have. So you can use these in all sorts of situations. They just screw on very, very easily and you're ready to go. And this is my 10% diffusion filter of the 52 millimeter. And this is a slightly more subtle version, which you'll see in just a moment here with my example clips. So this is with the 10% on, this is taking it off. You can see the edges of the figure are quite harsh and hard and pointed. And then you put it back on and it softens it up nicely again. So you're getting a nice kind of bloom on the light as well on the right hand side. Again, if you watch my comparison video, this will be a lot more obvious with different situations. And it's just a really nice way to get rid of that kind of harsh digital look on your image. Now with the 20%, it's way softer. You get much more almost of a, a mist feel across your image and the bloom from the light is a lot more accentuated as well. So it's a really, really useful tool to have. And I use the 10% for all films that I use. And whilst the differences can be subtle in this example here, if you watch my moment, Cinebloom Filters 10 versus 20% video, you'll see a lot more daytime and nighttime examples. So you'll see here, you've got that kind of blooming from the window. It's very subtle, very beautiful. And the 20% is a heck of a lot stronger. At nighttime, depending on the lighting situation, it can be quite subtle, but it really gives you that kind of real movie quality feel to a phone film, which is hard to do. Now, what about the smartphone gimbals that I mentioned earlier on? Well, my Osmo Mobile 3 is something that I use quite a lot, or at least I used to use quite a lot. It's great for B-roll, that kind of stuff. It's very compact, so you can see here, it fits into a nice small case that it comes in. That'll fit into a large pocket if you're carrying it around just in your coat, something like that. It's very versatile, very easy to take around with you, very travel friendly. And the one I got came with this tripod as well, which is nice. Now it's built for this specific Osmo Mobile gimbal, but you can use it for anything. It's just a generic tripod, really. But what it is great for is the B-roll you can see here. It stutters without it, but when you're using a gimbal, it just gives you pretty smooth movement and it just makes it feel a bit more silky and professional. You can also use it on a monopod for crane shots and jib shots, that kind of thing. So you hear about smartphone gimbals and how amazing they are and you get epic cinematic B-roll, all that kind of stuff. People make them out like they're amazing and it's your story, it's your moment. Transform the world with these smartphone gimbals. Is there anything these smartphone gimbals can't do? Yes, there is something it can't do, and that is hold lenses and D filters with counterweights as well. As you can see from this, it dies, it dies, it dies. Even with the counterweights to balance it out, it just doesn't hold a strong amount of weight very well at all because it's not built for that. These are all kind of vlogging things, and with the counterweights that are 20 grams each, you're adding 60 grams of weight to balance out a lens and filter that kind of stuff. These gimbals just aren't strong enough for that kind of weight, which is why I went and bought a Weeble S gimbal second hand from eBay. Now this cost me second hand about 225 pounds. So it is a very expensive addition to your smartphone filmmaking equipment. But if you can afford it, I really, really would recommend getting yourself a hybrid gimbal, even if it's not this Weeble S. You get a number of different modes that you just don't get with most smartphone gimbals and certainly not with the ability to use it with a cage and that kind of stuff and your filters, your lenses. As I said, it can fit a cage. This is the B-Script Pro Rig. You can use this, it levels out really nicely with the weight distribution and it allows you to get so many shots really, really silky smooth as well in any situation. I'm gonna use this a lot of my films that I make from now on as well. It's a real worthwhile purchase if you have the money. And you can get smooth shots like this. So you're just walking along. This is on gravel as well. So if you're using a smartphone gimbal, it's gonna be very bumpy and you're gonna to have to use a stabilization in post if it works at all. Now with this you can also do vortex mode which I'm clearly you know working on and practicing 
but it's something that's really fun to use and I think I would use this for very specific films, not all films of course, but it is a fun tool to use and give yourself something really different for a smartphone film, something that's going to stand out. You get POV mode as well, so it's a bit Inception-like where you can feel like you're walking along a wall or if you've got someone who's going through a very anxious moment, you could use it for that. So you can see here, it's a three-axis gimbal similar to a smartphone gimbal where you've got the roll, you've got the tilt and you've got the pan motion here as well. Now what's really amazing about this is an underslung mode, so with the sort of smaller candle that I've attached here, you can get really nice low to the ground shots and you don't have to kind of crouch down uncomfortably like you do with a smartphone rig. And you can get amazing stunning shots and really quick as well along the ground, you can see here rushing past everything. And it's really smooth even before post stabilization, so I highly recommend a hybrid gimbal. Now this is an accessory that I haven't really spoken about too much at all, apart from when I did a push in with a gimbal in one of my videos. This is my Niwa slider that I've had for about two years now in brand new condition because I've only used it once for a film and once for a tutorial video. Now this is 40 centimeters long so it's a decent length to do some nice smooth gliding shots across or sliding shots across. And you can put your phone clamp onto this as well which is really really handy. You actually get a phone clamp, uh, it's a cheap one but it works perfectly well for a phone and you can put that straight onto this slider, put the phone in there and it works exactly the same as a regular camera, really, really nice and smooth shots. Screw it on and you're good to go. Now on here as well, on the actual sort of central part that you roll along, it's got a red screw on the side right here. And as you screw that one way or the other, that actually loosens or tightens this grip on the carbon fibre rails. So as you loosen it, it's going to be quicker roll. If you tighten it, it's going to be much smoother and sometimes can be a bit jaggedy if you give it too tight. But get it right and you get really super silky smooth sliding shots. Also you can sort of screw the feet as well so they get longer or shorter. So if you're on a slightly uneven surface you can make it even by making these legs or one of them longer to flatten out that surface. Now I did use this in Plant Lady so I got a nice smooth shot along the floor which I don't think I could have got with a gimbal. It's really straight as well so if you want something quite precise it's a really good tool to have. And you can do nice reveal shots of characters as well, use it in different situations. Even with a tripod it can work really well and get yourself some really nice dynamic shots. Now something that is a real filmmaker's go-to for accessories is a 5-in-1 reflector. Now these are so important, especially if you're low budget, because you might not be able to buy lots of lights, but this will help you shape the light that you're working with, or whether it's sunlight using a reflector like this on the side of it, or if you want to do negative fill and put more shadow onto the side of a face of someone, or even put less light onto a wall, you can use it as a flag as well to shape the light you're using. In the middle, it's got a diffusion filter, which I've used as well. This is super, super handy, whether you're indoors or outdoors, because you can stop that light from just beaming too harshly onto a face and create a nice soft light on your subject. If you've watched my How to Create Cinematic Lighting on your smartphone film uh, tutorial video that I made, you will know that I got rid of shadows, very harsh shadows on my face by putting it up against a window so the sunlight was coming through that, diffusing and creating a really nice soft light. You've also got the gold side of this, which I presume would be more for modeling or if you just want to create a bit more of a warm look for a character. I haven't used this one at all, but it's nice to have that little extra there as well. On the opposite side to the gold, once you turn it inside out, you have the white balance, so that's really handy as well. I used this in the same video as my diffusion filter that I just referred to a moment ago, where you can actually clip it onto anything. So you can use the diffusion filter against the window, take that sheet off of it, and then use the white balance to do that as well. Now, let's talk about lighting. This is my Pocket Light Falcon Eyes F7 light. Now, this is an RGB light, and with smartphone filmmaking, lighting is so important because the sensors are so small, you often have to pump in a lot more light, especially with older models, as I found my 6S and 8. Uh, with this, I used it as a backlight and a rim light as well. With this particular light, you actually get a soft pouch to put all of these things in, so you've got a soft box, you've got a grid or a honeycomb, they call it, the charging cable, you've got an adapter, so you can screw that onto a rig setup and then attach the lights with the quarter inch thread underneath it to it and shape it and have it angled at any kind of angle that you want it to have it at. It also comes with uh, 20 different effects. Some of them I would say are more useful than others but they are really great to have. If you ignore the flashing of this screen it is not doing that in real life it's just on the camera. It has a huge range of colour temperature so you can go right down to get a really really warm colour temperature of about 2000 Kelvin almost pretty much candlelight really and you can go all the way up to much, much close to moonlight almost with 9,000 Kelvin. It's got a huge range of color temperatures. That's really, really helpful for smartphone filmmaking. You can change the hue and the saturation, although I'd probably do that more in post. And as you run through the colors here, you've got pretty much all the colors of the rainbow. 
and it's just a very powerful light as well for the size of it it puts out such a huge amount of light and it's not going to light up a room or anything but if you want a nice strong key light then it's going to work really really well especially if you use it with your uh, five in one reflector you can start to make some pretty amazing techniques and coloring onto your images and lighting effects as well now talking about lighting effects let's see what kind of scenes we can create with this light we've got things like lightning we've got a tv we've got candlelight what's the next one here We've got paparazzi, we've got so many different things. It really does vary from the crazy to the useful. And you've got different levels of lightning as well. You've got different flashing, you've got hazard lights, that kind of thing. You've got an ambulance or police siren, that type of thing, alarm kind of colors flashing as well. You've got colors on their own that flash, which I don't really think is particularly useful. I don't know why they've done that. They could have turned that into more of an alarm system color uh, sort of pattern, which would have been really useful. But I would say three quarters of these scenes are very, very useful for smartphone filmmaking, especially if you're on a low budget. You've got yourself a light and a way of creating different scenes on a very, very low budget. And it costs about £100, so it's super, super useful. If you've made it to the end of this video, then thank you so much for watching, everyone. I hope you've enjoyed it and learned a lot about the smartphone filmmaking accessories that are available to you. Hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. I will see you on the next one. Take care. Bye bye.